Hi, Rupert. Yes. Hi. Um, this morning you spoke about felt sense versus experience, and you gave a really interesting metaphor about it was our felt sense that said the world was flat, and then, of course, we found out it wasn't Sense true. perception, yes. I'm sorry, sense perception. Yes. Um, so that kind of really struck me. So, the, and you always say, all the retreats have been on, you know, go back to your experience, go back to your experience. Can you give me like a concrete example of experience versus sense perception? So I get the one about the earth being flat. Like that's what our, because you said this morning, unless I misinterpret, that the felt sense won't give you the truth, but experience will give you the truth. Did you say that, or did I imagine that? sense that? perception doesn't sense give us a, an, an accurate... Right. Sense of reality. Model of reality, Model, yes. right. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Or the, 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 um, the combination of sense perception and thought doesn't give us an accurate model, most thoughts. But yes, sense perception. Um, Yes, sense perception suggests that that uh, everyone and everything is outside of ourself. Sense perception suggests that what we essentially are is located in the body. As I said, when we close the eyes, the world disappears. We open the eyes, the world appears again. Our sense perception uh, suggests it's not really sense perception. It it, it is thought that is based upon a superficial interpretation of sense perception suggests that what we essentially are, consciousness, is located in and generated by the body and that uh, the world is outside of consciousness, made out of something other than consciousness, namely matter. That, that's what, and that this matter exists in something called space. And the interactions of matter exist in something called time. So this is, it's thought that suggests these things, but it's thought that is derived from a superficial observation of sense perception. Just as um, thought based on a superficial interpretation of sense perception tells us that the earth is flat tells us that the sun goes round the earth. It seems so obvious that the sun goes round the earth. So th these, these are all examples of um, superficial or simplistic interpretations of sense perception. But we know as we go a little bit more deeply into these matters, we know that, that uh, the initial evidence of our senses is not reliable. On the contrary, that senses can even give, a, give us a, a distorted view of reality. And that if we explore our experience of reality and we take experience as the starting point, not the apparent evidence of the senses, then we get a very different picture. We start with experience, for instance. Uh, we, we start, there is experience. All experience appears in consciousness. All experience is known by consciousness. And all experience is made of consciousness. That's just a model of reality based strictly on our experience. Now it's true that we cannot make complete sense of reality just using that model because we only have access to our own experience. So if we only relied on our own experience, we would have to deny that anyone else had their own inner experience. That is something that is outside our experience. So we, we could deny that anybody else has their own inner experience. That's called solipsism. But it, it, it doesn't make sense of our experience. It, it, it denies the fact that everybody that we come across behaves in almost exactly the same way as we behave. And the, the intelligent um, interpretation of that observation 
is to suggest that other people must have inner lives, just like I have an inner life. And the reason they smile, for instance, is the same reason that I smile. The reason why, why when they flinch when somebody treads on their toe is the same reason that I flinch. In other words, they have inner experience. They feel happiness. They feel pain. So that is an inference. I cannot experience somebody else's happiness or somebody else's pain. But I cannot explain the behavior I see in other people without presuming or inferring that they have inner experience similar to my own. So I, it is reasonable to infer that there are other minds, or other locations of experience that are outside my own limited experience but still inside consciousness. Now, you might object and say, well, what's the difference between inferring that there are other minds outside your own finite mind and the, the, the materialistic inference that there is something called matter outside consciousness? Aren't these two inferences identical? What is there to choose between them? And, and no, they're, they're, they're by no means identical because all, all I'm suggesting, the, the materialist inference suggests that there is a that there is a substance a category of experience namely matter that i have never experienced because all i experience is, is within consciousness so the materialists infer a completely new category of experience or a new substance namely matter which no one has ever found but nevertheless they they presume this substance called matter, in order to make sense of their experience, that is, in order to make sense of the world, in order to make sense of the fact that, for instance, we share the same world. How do we make sense of that fact without suggesting that there is a world outside each of our minds made out of matter? The belief that there is a world made out of matter outside each of our minds makes sense. It's a, it's a reasonable interpretation of fact that we all seem to share the same world. However, it infers a, this completely new substance, matter, which nobody has or could ever find. So that's an inference, I would say an illegitimate inference, an inference that it comes from nowhere in experience. It is completely abstract. It is the invention of a substance, namely matter, that nobody has ever found. Whereas in this consciousness only model, we are also inferring that there are other minds but other minds are not made out of something other than our own mind. In other words, we're not inventing some new category of experience or some new substance. All we're saying is that there are other minds like my own mind and that those minds are inside consciousness, not outside consciousness. So it's an inference, but it's a very small inference and it's an inference that is necessary to make sense of our experience, Never, namely other people behave like I do. So it is, a, it is an inference. It's something that cannot be checked in our own direct experience. But it, it's not possible to make sense of our experience without that inference. So I, I would suggest it was a legitimate inference. inference. Whereas the belief in the existence of a, subject co a substance called matter is, is, is not just um, illegitimate because it's... It, it's it imagines a substance which is completely outside the field of our experience. But it is also not necessary. It would only be legitimate to do so if it were necessary to make sense of our experience. But it is perfectly possible to, to, um, for there to be a model of reality that explains everything, for instance, that the laws of physics explain. But, but without recourse to this substance outside consciousness, namely matter. In other words, in this consciousness-only model, the laws of physics still hold, but they are understood to be the, the laws that govern the way mind unfolds or behaves in consciousness, rather than the laws that govern the behavior of matter. So that, that would be a, um, an example of building a, up a model that is based on experience, rather than just based on the the um, simplistic evidence of sense perception, and a model that only refers to, only uses inference when absolutely necessary.
Mm. Thank you.